Today we're talking wires. Wars. Wires. How do you say it in your neck of the woods? Around here in Missouri, a lot of people say war. That's not where I grew up. Down in the Georgias, they would say wires. But, uh, you know, we're in a city here and most people just say wire. So maybe that's what you say as well. We're going to talk about wires today. All sorts of things, mostly length and size. And what I'd like to talk about is, well, how long is too long and how small is too small. Although, unfortunately, this is not a hard and fast rule. But we can at least make some inferences and I can tell you at least what to look out for. So here are two different rigs. We've got this competition rig from Vanquish and we have this regular TRX-4 with a two speed. As you can see on this rig, we've got this neat little 540M team spec in here and it is hard soldered to our Crawlmaster B3 here. Now, being a team spec, this motor actually has pretty thin wires and it really doesn't have heat problems because it is a low KV. Lower KV motors, you can get away with thinner wires on, on these three phase wires in particular. But as you can see, the wires coming off the ESC for the battery side are thicker. That's because these are the stock ones. Could you get away with thinner? Is it getting hot? That's really the question. If it is not getting hot and you want to lose you know, a few grams of weight, then you could try soldering on some smaller wires. But as you can see here, these wires are even smaller. These are probably 14 gauge and these are going to be 20, maybe 22. It's probably looking on the jacket. 20 gauge. Yep. Why are these smaller? They carry less current. And that's really the crux of everything when it comes down to wire size is how much current are they carrying? Along with that, the length does actually matter because if you're carrying 10 amps of current for this much wire, it's going to make twice as less heat as this much wire. Uh, the longer the run, the more heat you have, the more voltage drop you have as well. So again, it's not really hard and fast rules. These are just things that we can observe and try to live by. As you can see on this battery, we got some real thick power wires coming off. This is 12 gauge and it's going to be overkill. And actually, this will end up being a slight heat sink for your motor. The bigger your motor wires are, the longer your motor wires are, the more they're going to suck heat into them. And you can actually use that for heat sinking, which is what we do on a lot of competition rig with brush motors. You essentially use that for some heat uh, shedding, heat sinking, also ability to soak the heat in. So it's like a, well, it's still called a heat sink, I suppose, because it sinks from a source. All right, so let's look at this one here. The wires are not custom length. We have, uh, you know, kind of a mess. It's not going to impress your girlfriend. But again, is an RC car ever going to impress your girlfriend? Probably not, I suppose. Let's set this aside and let's talk about this. So this motor is a 3500 kV. You need thicker wires when you have a higher KV, at least on the phase side, on the motor side. So that's what we have. The ones coming off of this are 12 gauge, if I'm not mistaken, and they are, are they labeled? Uh, 13 gauge, we split the difference between 12 and 14. So on this particular rig, depending on how tall you gear it, you're actually gonna want larger wires so that you don't have a lot of voltage drop. Going fast in particular, I know I usually talk about crawling, but going fast, you're gonna have more amperage, you're gonna have a lot more amperage needs, and so you wanna make sure that you do have nice thick wires so that you have the best performance. Now, knowing Castle, they probably went with 13 as well. Yep, 13 gauge on this Copperhead 10, and we've had no performance issues with this. Now, ideally, would I want shorter wires from the motor to the ESC? Yeah, probably. And if you have a soldering iron that is real beefy, you can desolder them from the motor tabs and solder them much shorter. Or if you don't have a big beefy iron, you would actually remove your bullets and move your bullets down. It's a lot easier to do that because you're not sinking all your heat into your motor when you're soldering. And that's probably the hardest part about soldering directly on a motor like that is you have a lot of heat sinking ability inside those coils, the copper wires, the stator, it's all gonna just pull your heat out. And so if you don't have a really big beefy iron with like a, you know, a quarter inch tip on it or something like that, you might not be able to get that solder out. 
But again, we've got these thinner wires here. This is for direct power uh, servos, for light systems, whatever. It's only 20 gauge wire, but it's not passing as much amperage. On this particular system, I can tell you that burst, this motor can pull 80 amps really fast. A servo, on the other hand, bursts, if it's a direct power, maybe eight tops. Most of them are more like five, and the lower power versions are like three amps. They're, they're pretty low as far as current is concerned. Um, if it was not a direct power, so instead of running on 3 or 4S direct, you run on 2S direct, you're actually going to have twice the amperage. And I would potentially, you know, the, the 20 gauge is going to be marginal, but on a normal servo, you're going to have a normal servo wire as well. This little, this little RX wire right here. This is what a normal servo is going to have. And that can actually limit your performance on them. It's one reason why a direct power has been my preference for many years is that even though you have a little bit of performance difference over the voltage change of your battery, you can pass the current through a separate system instead of your RX wire. You've got these teeny little plugs in here. You are passing your current through your radio. And so it's kind of a choke point. And if you're looking to do, you know, a thousand ounce inches off of something like this, uh, you're probably going to be pulling, depending on the speed of it, you're probably pulling 15 to 20 amps at a, at a stall. And that's not going to make these wires very happy. But fortunately, in a servo, you're not doing that all the time consistently. So it has a little chance to cool down and the small wires end up working. But I would say that they're really not ideal in that sort of situation. So again, that's why I prefer direct power servos. You can get a separate path for your current. You get a lot beefier wires easily because you're not trying to fit into these little bitty RX plugs. And it's the same story, just in a different part of the system. I'll make sure I put this back where it belongs. Which channel was it? Channel two. Yes. There you go. So on this rig, yeah, I'd probably shorten these wires if I wanted to be ideal about it. However, we have no problems with heat. And generally when you're crawling, you don't have to worry about it so much. If you're buying a system, hopefully the system has been designed for crawling and you're not gonna have any issues with heat. You know, just go along with the gearing recommendations and select something that is gonna do what you want it to do, like this 3500 kV. You wanna go fast on a two speed, it's the way to do it. You're not gonna have any problems on it really, unless you're, I don't know, maybe doing sand drags over and over and over again, maybe. But even so, probably gonna be fine your battery is gonna be the one that ends up not liking that in a crawler because it needs a big old battery to be happy all right one more example down here what not to do this definitely won't impress your girlfriend so we've got this rig what is this uh sex3 maybe i don't remember at this point and we've got our stock wires coming off of our motor this is a do, do, do 540m 1800 kv so this is the new one that we just came out with and it does come with the thinner wires because it's only 1800 kv so this is the 18 gauge wires no issue with heat in a crawler you gear it up to go really fast and yeah you may have some heat issues now we've got our wires also 18 gauge going into a very small speed controller and then we have our direct power wire going here as well we also do have our rx wire which again, here, I'll just unplug these and you can kind of see what's going on a little better. We have our RX wire and it can actually be super thin because all we're powering is our radio. That's practically nothing as far as the amp draw is concerned. So it could be a 28 gauge, doesn't really matter. But our servo on the other hand, some sort of direct power, we've got this direct power here and this is gonna be our 20 gauge. Again, for crawling, you're gonna be good, especially with a direct power servo. But ideally, you know, th this length of wire is actually getting a little long. And, and of course, the, you know, where do you put it? It's just all over the place. This is kind of problematic to wire. So if you have the ability to resolder something, this is when you would probably just clip these wires and, and directly solder them to the ESC because there's not a lot of chance to move the plug. Oh, well, I guess you could. You could desolder the plugs on the motor side and, and resolder them down there if you wanted to be able to... Uh, unplug and plug them back in in the future so i mean i would probably take maybe half of the length uh, but there's a perfect spot to mount the controller right there so you could get away with like you know two inches of wire tops and it'd be good maybe uh, maybe we go 
this now it doesn't matter which way you go it's gonna it's gonna have to twist to get in so yeah i'd probably go with something like this maybe give myself just a little bit extra wire just in case you know maybe we have to move in the future because when you direct solder like that you're pretty much dedicated to your rig and your system that's that's going to be what happens so yep there you go i hope that at least explains a little bit about wires and wire sizes and wire lengths and all the different things that can happen in a rig so there you go the biggest takeaway just make sure your rig's not running hot and if you're finding that your wires are getting really hot on a rig then you probably need to upsize and if you can't upsize maybe you can shorten it because those are the two biggest ways to reduce heat losses is bigger wires and shorter wires so there you go if you do have any further questions on it leave your comments down below we'll do our best to get to them as always thanks for tuning in have a great day You've made it to the end of the video. Hopefully that means you liked what you saw. If you want to help out the channel, you can like, subscribe, and definitely comment down below. We would like to hear new ideas from you, so be sure you let us know what you'd like to see. There are some other suggestions probably floating by my head right now that you can check out. And otherwise, we appreciate your support and your help growing the channel.